the number of students attending college tripled during the boomer years. 700 new colleges opened to handle the increase. Think about that. 700 new colleges had to open, the number of kids going to college tripled. Token, smoking, recreational drug use becomes prevalent. That is a huge joint. But was all 60 music great? No, it was not. I'm going to play a little bit of a song that I just think is funny. Um, I am not advocating drug use. I do not use drugs. I hope you guys do not. Um, I know marijuana is, you know, there's this push for legalization. I do not really support it, but this was a popular song in the 60s. See if I can get it to play. I like marijuana, you like marijuana, we like marijuana too. I'm marijuana, marijuana, marijuana. Okay, you guys get the idea. I'm not going to play the rest of the song. I just think it's a funny song. Um, but again, do not advocate. Drugs are bad. Stay off drugs. Um, but this is the Dave Peel. The band was called Dave Peel and the Lower East Side. Not exactly great 60s music. Here's the style of the counterculture. This is Jimi Hendrix up in the right corner, the black guy with the headband. Um, had a big influence on what people wore. The, this is kind of, you know, the long hair, the uh, shades, uh, a lot of fringes, uh, jeans. Um, remember, we talked about um, yesterday, uh, it showed you some of the kids. Um, before the protest years that you know they're coming to school and the guys with crew cuts and 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 ties and shirts and the girls in skirts and dresses and and now you see the style today where girls and guys don't really dress all that different um but here's some here's some ladies fashion Sh much shorter skirts certainly the hot pants and then you have the bell-bottom pants that were big. I don't know why bell bottoms got, I guess because they wore a lot of boots. Started out boot cut jeans and pants and then they kept flaring out and getting bigger and bigger. Um, the 60s fashions are certainly interesting. The counterculture takes its way to Broadway. The musical Hair uh, debuted in the, uh, I believe in the 70s but it was about the 60s culture. Hair is still a, a musical that you will see uh, around. It'll get revived on Broadway every now and again, off Broadway. It'll show up at like Playhouse Square in Cleveland uh, every few years. Um, and it's about, you know, the, the long hair um, is what it comes down to in the 60s uh, culture. Productions. Um, these are all uh, books written in the 1960s about you know, consciousness and um, um, you know, you see the American Indian movement off top, booming the economy, blowing up the economy. Um, you know, this how to fight back against the man. Uh, 
this the sixties counterculture is invading all aspects of society. Sixties art, very psychedelic, colorful, you know, rays, lots of uh waviness. Um you can see the Grateful Dead, they were big noted for this is when uh, covers of albums became artwork. Uh, this was back in the days of, of vinyl records. I'm sure you all have seen vinyl records. There's been a resurgence in the last few years. People listening to music on vinyl. You get a sound on vinyl that you just don't get through computers, through CDs. Um, the little imperfections on a vinyl record actually enhance the musical experience for a lot of people. Um, but the, you know, obviously an album's a bigger uh you know piece you know a, 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 a record is you know basically like an eight eight by 14 square album cover a lot of people like to display that as artwork grateful dead was known for their uh, album cover art the counterculture makes it to mainstream tv i'm not sure these hippies up in the corner what show that is in the top uh, this is called the Smothers Brothers. Tim and Dick Smothers were comedians that had a variety show um, that uh, talked a lot of kind of politics, but not in-your-face politics. It was jokes and, and sketch comedy, but it was very influenced by the counterculture. In the, in the far right-hand corner, this man's name is Dick Cavett. He's still alive, still does interviews. He was... Um, Kind of a Johnny Carson type. Uh, you guys don't know who Johnny Carson is either. Um, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, an interviewer, a late night interviewer. Um, he would talk to more serious, um, on more serious topics. Uh, kind of bridge the gap between entertainment and news. Um, and then down below, uh, the couple, that is Sonny and Cher. You've probably heard of Cher. She's still around still making music at the time she was married to this gentleman his name was Sonny Bono they had a variety show the Sonny and Cher hour through the 70s but they took off in the 60s um were very popular then this uh bottom right corner these three young people were known as the mod squad this was a tv show the guy in the middle is Pete the black guy's name is Link and the girl's name is Julie they were cops that went undercover in um like high school um and college and they were like this youth cop show where the culture of the youth made it into mainstream tv and everyday life um this, these were some examples of how the culture you know permeated through the society in the 60s and into the early 70s The baby boom was a self-absorbed generation, a generation that defined itself not through sacrifice as its parents had, but through indulgence. Their parents' generation would be my grand grandparents' generation, your great grandparents' generation. The World War II generation was called the greatest generation because of the sacrifices they had to make. The baby boomers, it's the opposite. They're indulging in everything. But then they start to ask, when does nonconformity become conformity? Frank Zappa was a musician of the time, famously said, everyone in the room is wearing a uniform. Don't kid yourself. When you all start dressing the same and everyone starts acting like a hippie, you're conforming to the hippie culture. It ceases to be a counterculture when it's accepted. So that's when you start to see the decline of the hippie movement. Because it's like, can you buy a lifestyle? It's the descent into cliche. You see these stores open up where, look at all the tie-dyed shirts are all made up. The products are all made up. In the early, in the movement of the 60s and the hippie movement, you made your own tie-dye shirts. That was the whole point. When you can just buy them in a store, is you're buying the lifestyle 
you're not really living the lifestyle. Here, this uh, little cartoon there, if this is an ad for a, a store, Hippie Shop in Fairfield, New Jersey, a gathering for peace, our new store, grand opening. You know, it's you're buying the culture, buying the lifestyle. Let's skip that slide. So that's when we start to see they, they actually hold a funeral for the hippie. People say the, the hardcore true hippies are, are, are burying it and they're saying, listen, that the movement's run its course. Then we start to see the self-indulgent generation become the me generation. In the 70s, this will move into the culture of the cult of youth, women, how to not look old, life without wrinkles, color me younger, hair coloring, a boomer's guide to aging, sex, drugs, and growing old instead of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And then below here, that's the Grateful Dead, the old guys back on the road touring. So keep on trucking. That was the famous thing to say in the 60s. Acid test graduation. That's what that bus said. And I couldn't read what it said. Um, okay. Um, anybody have any questions? In all of this uh, fuss over getting on and off, I forgot to hit record when I restarted again. I started recording about halfway through the lecture. So I'm going to post it. It'll be some help towards the end of the lecture if you guys are missing anything. Um, but uh, hope you enjoyed your strange trip through the 60s. Emily Allison, are you on? Yeah. What do you think? You're my you're my resident hippie expert. Uh <laughs> I'm yeah. calling you out because you're a good <laughs> easy rider. So uh, <laughs> does this kind of resonate with what you saw in Easy Rider? Yeah, it was exactly that. It was just <laughs> people just doing drugs and staying at communes and partying. Yeah. So, okay. All right, guys. Um, well, starting tomorrow, we're going to get into the 1970s. And this is the era I was born into. Um, so the next couple of lectures, you're going to get some more good insights of things that I remember from my youth. And a lot of you can ask your parents about. This is going to be your parents' generations we're going to talk about. Um, so it should be fun. Okay. So everybody have a good day. Um, look for your extra credit assignment to be posted sometime later this morning, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.